What's going on everybody? Today is another day where I have to take two Supras to the port and as you can see I'm sitting and driving one of the Supras to Nagoya port and we expect the Supras to be delivered to the United States and in this video you get to learn more about both Supras that I am about to take to the port and learn about their history and story. This one that we are going to take to the port right now is 995 uh, month July Toyota Supra SZ and the story of this car basically is that Zane from the United States contacted us saying that he is joining the military and he will uh, be back to the United States in 2020 and when he is back he wanted to get his dream car which is Supra in black color so at the time we, we had the Supra about two months ago uh, the story happened actually and we offered the Supra which is around 68,000 kilometers uh, very clean very very much well, well maintained car oh my god sorry for my English and uh, basically he ended up purchasing this car at the price of uh, $18,300 or something like that price basically so we will be uh, storing this car for him until uh, July of uh, 2020 and we will basically ship out the car once it is 25 years old and USA import legal at exactly the time when the Zane will be back uh, from his deployment and uh, he will get to his he will get to drive his dream car Supra as, he, as you can see look at the interior of the car it's a pretty clean car uh, dashboard and everything seats basically mostly stock car except for the shift knob of the car as you can see over there so mostly stock beautiful condition Supra SZ will be going to the United States in 2020 until then we will be basically storing the car at the port <laughs> this is Orange Supra SZ 1994 manufactured in February so it's going to be USA import legal in February of uh, 2019 so about two months from now but we will be shipping out to the United States in uh, December at the end of December 2018 so by the time it will reach the United States in about 38 days it's going to be USA import legal in February a uh, little bit about the car itself this car is actually uh, non-turbo automatic transmission and one of the cheapest Supras you can actually find in the market in Japan. The original color of this car was silver but the owner was very much a big fan of a Fast and Furious uh, uh, movie just like we all are of course and he wanted to have his Supra repainted to match the color of the orange Supra future there. So basically he did he had his uh, Supra repainted uh, although it doesn't look exactly like that, but the paint job has been overall a good job done. I mean, paint workshop has overall done a good job on that car. And it's accident free. It has 109,000 kilometers genuine on the mileage. Pretty much a relatively clean car. You know, it drives pretty awesome. I will be driving it to the port right now and you get to see the performance of the car along the way. But this is pretty much how the interior of the car looks. Uh, as you can see, it's a uh, pretty much stock except for the aftermarket uh, audio power there and uh, mileage. This one is also genuine, 109,415 kilometers, and it basically uh, drives pretty awesomely. So I will show you the engine compartment of the car. Let's check it out here. 
here we go so basically car is running and this car does not have any rust and it's pretty good uh, pretty much uh, of a uh, good condition so just to point it out this car is not actually sold yet um, we are planning to sell this car we have several inquiries on the car and we want to be able to ship out this car in December so uh, we think that's highly likely to be uh, sold by by the end of December and we would like to ship it out to the United States once it is USA import legal under 25 year, uh, years old rule so um, there we go this is pretty much mostly what you can see about the Supra so let me sit down in the car and actually get ready to go uh, to get ready to go to the port and before that I have to set my dealership plates up so one second we are all set dealership plates are on this is pretty much the interior of the car how it looks and we are on our way to the port right now let's go interesting fact about this car as you guys understand i drive all types of japanese sports cars nissan skyline gtrs uh, all models of course rx7 supras but you might say that this car is automatic transmission it's a, an a not turbo and everything else but i tell you what this car is pretty fast as well watch this out to come back uh, to the story of the cars um, basically this orange Supra again uh, we have several inquiries on the car that I'm driving right now uh, we are asking for 11,800 US dollars for the car we have several people interested but uh, nobody has pulled the trigger yet but again it drives pretty awesome the interior of the car is very clean it's accident free uh, I think it's totally worth it considering the fact that it's also USA import legal uh, you can start driving the car from February 2019 so um, the reason we are taking the car to the port is that uh, we are basically uh, we are doing a construction at one of our lots behind our shop so we are trying to actually move all the cars from that lot and that's one of the reasons that uh, although this car is not 100% decided yet I'm taking it to our yard at the port which we keep at any given time uh, 50 to 20 cars anyways so there will be several other cars I have to take but uh, right at this moment um, uh, me and Ito-san is taking the black Supra uh, just like that you saw earlier and that black Supra the, the, as I told you a little bit earlier it has been already sold to our USA customer we will be now storing the car for him until July of 2020 when we ship out his car to him to the United States and by the time he will be back from his deployment uh, and uh, he gets to drive his uh, dream Supra um, as he said upon his arrival back to the United States so a lot of you has been asking me this question and I like to ask answer several questions here so that um, so that um, you get your answers from me as well so some of you have asked me in the comments below and other videos about the storage how does that work and uh, what it is all about right so basically we provide storage for customers with different uh, purposes basically and then mostly uh, the, the if, 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 if you're talking about in the case of the United States we provide storage for the cars that are not yet 25 years old meaning that uh, they are 23 years old or 24 years old or or, or any basically year that is not yet USA import legal under 25 years old rule so uh, we have two types of storages one is indoor indoor storage is basically uh, just like the name says we keep the car indoor uh, the secure location of course we have uh, our big shop of course and behind our shop we have two other indoor locate uh, storage houses that we get to store the cars 
and uh, which also includes the maintenance of a car as well you know running the engine and taking care of the car while it's being stored and the cost of this storage is basically around 200 us dollars a month so if you store the car let's say for one year it's going to cost you around 2400 us dollars for the indoor storage um, and the other type of storage that we provide to our customers is outdoor storage outdoor storage is again just like i told you earlier um it's a it's we have several yards behind our shop at the port as well we have a yard that we keep uh, 15 20 cars at any given time uh and basically outdoor storage refers to that basically we store the car outside not the inside but of course it's a secure location car is uh uh, well protected uh, no one is going to touch it uh, and our guys still take care of the maintenance such as running the engine uh, once in a month for a while and you know all the maintenance related stuff we will take care of it it's a basic maintenance of course but uh, we'll be take care of being, uh, taking care of the cars as well outdoor as well so for example some of you have asked me a question uh, saying that it's 2018 now and uh, I want to purchase a Nissan Skyline GTR R33 and it's going to be USA import legal uh, in 2020 and I want to import it. I think that's a fabulous uh, a fabulous idea because uh, as you know, the price of the cars, especially GTR, since they are so limited and there's so much demand for them, they go up, they tend to go up by the time they become USA import legal. Let me give you an example on specifically a GTR R30, uh, R32s, right? So if you look at the numbers, there were more than 44,000 GTR R32s were manufactured in five years of span from 1989 to uh, 1994. And uh, from 1995 to 1997 or eight, uh, next generation uh, Nissan Skyline GTR was manufactured, which is GTR 33. Then of course, from 1999 to 2002, there were GTR R34, the next generation uh, Skyline GTR manufacturer. So there were 44,000 uh, GTR 32 manufactured in total. 17,000, more than seven, a little bit more than 17,000, but uh, around 17,000 R33 GTR manufactured uh, in the lifespan of three years. And around 14,000 GTR 34 were manufactured. Now, if you look, since I've been in this automotive industry for a very long time right now, uh, if you look at the prices of R32s, GTRs, they more than quadrupled in price in Japan uh, by, the, by, the, by the time they become USA import legal. For example, in 2014, you could get a really nice GTR32 for around uh, uh, 8,000 or 10,000 US dollars. And that was the times that all of our clients, local clients in Japan, used to be very happy with the cars that they, uh, they are able to purchase basically, right? Because they were not in USA import legal and there was not a hype on the cars yet. But um, once the cars start becoming USA import legal, US market starts sucking up all the GTR 32s. Although there were more than 44,000 of them were manufactured. Of course, a lot of them are uh, crashed and, and gone, of course. But, but again, the, the price of the cars the same car that you would be able to buy in Japan in 2000, let's say 14, uh, right now at $8,000, let's say, right now in Japan uh, costs you maybe 30, 35,000 US dollars. This has become that expensive because there's so much demand from United States, it's just unlimited. Now, again, it's just the rule of uh, economics, supply and demand. If you look at the number of R33s now, they were manufactured only 17,000, which is almost three times less in numbers than R32s. But they are a next generation model cars, and uh, they are priced right now even cheaper a little bit in, in comparison to R32s. It's unbelievable. And uh, what we expect, what I personally expect as a professional in the industry is that uh, their price will go up. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that by the time they are USA import legal, the, their price will be going nuts. Um, so uh, for around 30,000 US dollars right now, you can get really nice, uh, really nice condition, uh, very well kept R33 GTRs, 995. 
and in 2020 we will be USA import legal we already have several customers who already purchased cars and have been storing with us so um, so we ha if there are people who are from the United States and they want to beat the market inflation and store their cars that's kind of storage that we offer for those people so basically we sell the car to them uh, at a really nice price so we find the right car that they are looking for and we offer them according to their preferences either indoor or outdoor storage uh, of course for high value cars we recommend indoor storage and uh, low va value cars we, 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 we recommend outdoor storage depending on the car's condition uh, the price of course and the needs of our customers so let's say that if you are um, if you are interested in R33 GTR, you want to beat the market inflation, you can get really, really nice condition, low mileage R33 GTR right now for $30,000, right? And then we offer you storage, and by the time of 2020, we can have that car delivered to you in the United States. And that's basically all about the storage that we provide, you know, and we, we take full responsibility for the cars we are storing and everything else. Now, let's come back to the example of Zane, uh, USA military personnel who is on deployment right now, purchased that black Supra. Right now, we are taking to the port. He was able to purchase that Supra, low mileage, very clean, pretty much stock, awesome condition, uh, five-speed manual Supra uh, SC. He was able to purchase that for 18,000 US dollars. It's 18,000 something, right? And we will have that car delivered to him in 2020 when he's back from the deployment. Now, uh, if you do the calculation, exactly the same condition car right now, it's already very hard to find 983 Supra SZs right now, black and well kept, that kind of condition. But even if you find it, you can find it for 23, $25,000 maybe in Japan. That's the price that you will have to pay for, for, uh, for 983 Supra SZ, clean, low mileage, uh, accident free, and pretty much stock Supra. Now, Zane was able to get it for $18,000 because uh, the demand for that car. Uh, of course, from the United States, there's no demand for it, for it because uh, most people do not uh, prefer to store the car for two years. So, um, and that's the example how Zane is basically gaining or, or basically being able to save around 7,000 US dollars by storing the car with us uh, at one of our parking, uh, of course, uh, the, the storage uh, look uh, parking lots, and uh, we will have it delivered to him. And I'm sure that he's going to be super happy. And Zane, if you are watching me here, uh, you have done a fabulous decision, and I think your investment is growing by the time it's being stored here. Because even in Japan, uh, you cannot find cars like that anymore. I mean, they are become very, very rare, and and uh, and it's surprising that how rare they are these days. So even in Japan right now, if you look at low mileage, clean stock condition Supras, there are maybe four or five available at any given year, not just 93, 94, 95. So it's quite hard and it's a good investment for sure. So I am on the orange Supra uh, SZ, uh, driving it right now. It uh, drives pretty awesome so far. I don't have any issues or whatsoever uh, with the car. Uh, it drives pretty awesome. Uh, and I totally think that it is worth the value, which is 11,800 US dollars. Hey, even if you take it to the US right now and we offer it for sale, I'm sure you can make a quite nice return on the car as it is condition, because uh, because it's although it is automatic transmission and non-turbo, uh, it drives pretty fast, pretty fabulous. I mean, for it is uh, for its grade and everything else. And uh, yeah, I think it's totally worth it. Pretty clean interior, accent.